Hello and welcome to Euphoria TV Breaking News. My name is Dr David Bull. I'm a medical journalist and I'm delighted to be here as your host for this, our first show of June 2021. Now this show is about GINA 2021, the much anticipated 2021 update of the Global Strategy for Asthma Management and Prevention. In a minute I'll be talking to Professor Arzu Yorganzioglu, Professor in the Department of Pulmonology at Salal Bayer University School of Medicine in Manisa in Turkey. And then we'll be heading to South Africa, where I'll be speaking to Professor Eric Bateman, who is Emeritus Professor in the Division of Pulmonology and Department of Medicine at the University of Cape Town. Now, the 2021 update of the Global Strategy for Asthma Management and Prevention incorporates new scientific information about asthma based on a review of recent scientific literature by an international panel of experts on the GINA Science Committee. And this comprehensive and practical resource about one of the most common chronic lung diseases worldwide contains extensive citations from the scientific literature and it forms the basis for other GINA documents and programmes. So to tell us more about the 2021 GINA update, I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor Arzu Yorganzioglu. She is Professor of Pulmonology at Salal Bayer University in Manisa in Turkey, and she's involved in a large number of clinical studies evaluating both new and established pharmacological interventions in asthma and COPD. I can also tell you she's published more than 220 scientific papers, is a member of many scientific committees, including the Turkish Thoracic Society, the European Respiratory Society, and she's also a board member of GINA. Professor, it is fantastic to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me. Well, let me start uh, for, for those viewers who aren't really sure what GINA is. Perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about the history and where GINA comes from. Of course, I will be happy to. Uh, GINA was established by WHO, World Health Organization, and NHLIBI, National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, in 1993. And its aim was to increase the awareness about asthma and to improve asthma prevention and management globally. Uh, I must say that GINA is not a guideline but it's a global evidence-based strategy uh, that can be adopted for local health systems and the medicine availability. And it is relevant to both uh, low and high income country as well as the medium income countries. So we provide key recommendations and we update our report uh, every year. Mm -hmm. So tell me then, uh, obviously a lot of work goes into this. What is new in the GINA 2021 update? Yeah. Uh, GINA started the treatment figure in, uh, as a stepwise approach in 1995. And then the management uh, approach based on the control system in 2006. Uh, and also population level and patient level recommendations changed in 2014. And we had a fundamental change in uh, 2019, and we did uh, no longer recommend SABA, short-acting beta agonist, uh, for the treatment. And this was a population-level risk reduction strategy, such as we use the statins or antihypertensives. Uh, the aim was to reduce the probability of severe adverse outcomes at a population level. And uh, GINA in 2020 has preferred uh, and alternative uh, options for the uh, treatment, uh, as you can see in this figure. But in 2021, we divided our uh, recommendations into two in the main treatment figure. Uh, in the first one, the controlled and the preferred reliever, uh, we use re uh, as needed low dose ICS formaterol as reliever. And 
And for the maintenance treatment for step one and two, you can see here that we have merged step one and two now. Uh, we are not no longer using a mild intermittent and mild persistent asthma. And for step three, step four and step five, uh, again, for the maintenance treatment, we are using ICS for material and for reliever uh, as needed, low dose ICS for material. This is so important because we have very good data showing us that uh, if we are using maintenance and reliever uh, low dose ICS for material, this uh, approach uh, reduces the risk of severe exacerbations compared to the regimens with SABA as the reliever. But uh, for the uh, patients or the, for the countries, this approach is not available or is not preferable. There is another track uh, for those patients. Uh, we can uh, use uh, as needed short beta agonists, SABAs, for the reliever uh, in this option. But uh, for step one, taking ICAs whenever SABA taken. And for the other steps, low dose maintenance ICS or low dose maintenance ICS LABA as the maintenance treatment, what we are using here, SABA. Well, let me ask you, what do you, what do you particularly like about this 2021 update? Is it the fact that different countries can respond differently? Is it the fact that you've given different clinicians different measures that they can implement? Of course, we are, we are now uh, providing them two options. These options are important according to the reimbursement rules or the uh, exception of the authorities, or authorities for this uh, approach. And uh, I'm happy to provide two options, although we prefer track one mostly. Uh, and I must say that we can uh, define this treatment figure in 2021 is the SABA only treatment free report. So obviously this is about improving patient care, but, but at the end of the day, how can we make sure that all care providers dealing with asthma capture the content of this 2021 GINA update and implement it? Thank you very much for this very important question. I must firstly say that GINA is independent and funded only by sale and licensing of its reports and figures. And GINA report is a global evidence-based strategy that can be adapted for the local systems only. So it's a global strategy. And more than 500,000 copies of GINA reports downloaded each year from 100 countries. And uh, GINA strategy is updated every year. And I can say that uh, every colleague in different countries are looking for the GINA updates each year. And uh, we also have GINA advocates. Uh, they are the ambassadors of GINA and they commit themselves to disseminate GINA strategy documents and fostering GINA implementation in their own countries. So we very much trust our advocates and we, uh, I might say they, that uh, GINA is a highly respected and uh, highly recommended uh, strategy report. Well, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you, Professor. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Arzu Yorganzioglu. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, we're heading to South Africa now, to Cape Town, where I'm joined by Professor Eric Batesman. He is a pulmonologist and the founder and director of the University of Cape Town Lung Institute. His primary research interests are the pharmacology and management of asthma and COPD, as well as community-based interventions to improve the care of patients with chronic diseases. He's also a member of the board and science committee of GINA, the Global Initiative for Asthma. Professor, it is very good of you to join me. Let me start by asking you quite a difficult question, I suppose. What do you consider is the, is the biggest challenge of asthma care in 2021? When, when I consider the challenges of asthma management, uh, I'm most concerned, uh, I take a global perspective, I'm most concerned about the fact that 80% of asthma deaths occur in low middle income countries, uh, that although it's a condition where we believe every death is avoidable, unlike all the other chronic diseases, uh, we're not achieving anything like it uh, in, in low middle income countries. 
And even in some of the better provided for countries, uh, there, there remains a, a group of patients who are at risk and asthma deaths continue, and these are avoidable. So for me, the challenge is we know what to do. We haven't found a way to produce it in a program that will meet the unmet need, uh, particularly uh, in low middle income countries. So what do you like most then about GINA and this 2021 update? Is it that international outlook, the fact it's looking from a global perspective? Well, I, I believe what it does is it clarifies the, the, the choices that are available uh, for managing asthma. Um, if you're familiar with the, the layout of the treatment, you will see now there are two tracks designated. The one, the second and less preferable one uh, is the traditional one where we use a short-acting beta agonist as a reliever and controller medications. What is new is that there is a clear track which involves using from the mildest to the most severe a combination of inhaled corticosteroid with the bronchodilator, uh, preferably a long-acting beta agonist or formoterol. Now, this, I believe, uh, is going to address the unmet need of patients who rely on their short-acting beta agonists. And this is a, an important reason why so many patients die in low middle income countries. They rely on the bronchodilator. It's all that's available and they don't have access to an inhaled corticosteroid of any form, uh, let alone during attacks. And so, by making this the preferred treatment, what we're saying is it doesn't matter where you live in the world, you ought to, if you've got asthma from the mildest to the severe, you need an inhaled corticosteroid. And the time to take it uh, is first of all, when you have symptoms, symptom driven, but of course also as in more severe asthma in, a, in the form of a, of a maintenance dose. And this is really very easy to teach in the humblest of circumstances uh, in rural communities. It's a simple matter of titrating the dose against the presentation of symptoms and the severity of asthma, which, uh, and we do a lot of work in translational research here in, in Africa, and I can assure you this is highly trainable. So Gina has now included something that is, is, can be translated for the most needy of the world and I believe this is a great advance of the 2021 um, guide. So clearly you think Gina will definitely improve the care of patients then globally, but how do you ensure that clinicians around the world know about Gina, abide by what Gina says, and the pathways that are included in it? Well, Gina has no authority, as it were, to change the world. What, what we are are clinical clinicians and scientists who look at the evidence and design studies which, which, uh, which support or refute uh, our hypotheses. And I think uh, the changes we see now represent more than a decade of, of serious thought on the part of the GINA Science Committee as to about the unmet need and what might meet that need. And I think, uh, so the science is now there. What is the next step? Well, first of all, we need to persuade our colleagues, clinicians, that this is indeed the way asthma care should be going. Next, we need to consider agencies such as the World Health Organization, large NGOs that operate in needy countries, and to make them aware of the change and how it might be a good buy for them for their limited dollars uh, when they consider asthma care. And that is beginning to happen, I'm pleased to say, uh, but we need to keep the pressure on uh, to make them familiar that things have changed in the area of asthma care. And, and, and which, uh, which are harder to influence? Is it the clinicians or, or the agencies? Well, I hate to be disloyal. I'm a clinician through and through, but clinicians are naturally conservative and they tend to think about the patient in front of them, which is good. That's what our discipline demands. However, we need to stretch our minds and say, what, if we, what would happen at a global level if we changed our practice and implemented what, what will provide the best results for the greatest number. And I think that's what the new GINA recommendations do. Uh, so I'm ex extremely excited to see uh, people now starting to imagine what 
the, how this might change the asthma landscape. Well, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Eric Bateman. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, that's it for this edition of Euphoria TV Breaking News. Many thanks to my guests, to Professor Arzu Yorganzioglu and to Professor Eric Bateman for their wonderful interviews about GINA 2021. Now you can find more information about Euphoria and register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. You can also follow us on Twitter. The address is at Euphoria. But that's it for this show. See you soon and thank you very much for watching.